Hang on. How are you looking there? Dude, I don't want to stand that close to it. It's freaking loud. Pussy. Whatever. Are you good? No. All right, go. That's nice. I like it. Clean, isn't it? Yeah. Really clean. Yeah, it works well. It does. No muzzle rise and flash suppression. Yeah. And it doesn't freaking rip you off either. That's a Griffin M4 SD2 muzzle device. It pretty much rocks. I'm impressed. I think it's safe to say that in the last five years, of doing the Nut and Fancy project. The crew, myself, guest to TMP, heck, even the antelope and Allie the Mountain Dog have shot a wide variety of muzzle devices across all types of weapon platforms. AR-15, AK Variant, 308 Battle Rifle, SBR, SPR, Sappers, I know, still lots of acronyms and of course all sorts of tactical carbines. Now if you're new to the Nut and Fancy Project, TMP for short, welcome, and I'll say what I always say. Dude, you got lots of video to catch up on. And then 10 here. There's your playlist, all right. namely five years worth. Try to hit this or time. if you're an original tmp -er, dating all the way back to 2008, 09 perhaps, by the way you rock, then you've been watching the videos as we've gone along here for five years. I think we've done a pretty good job of representing all types and brands of non-suppressor muzzle devices during that time. For instance, if you dig into those videos, you will see us shooting Troy Industries, Vortex, Rock River Arms, CAC, Battle Comp, Ops Inc, YHM, AAC, just to name a few. However, in the last five years, I have never done a dedicated tabletop review on a non-suppressor muzzle device until now. And that's because this one pretty much rocks, and it's high value, and I'm recommending it to the TMP Nation. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy tabletop review on the Griffin Armament M4 SD2 series. Nut and Fancy style. And you know what that means, right? That's right, nothing. You're going to start off with POU. You guessed it, and you'll like it. Trust me. I'm going to make this video as short as I can, but I got to do POU because it goes something Yards. like this. Do you need a muzzle device on your tactical carbine? Let's say it's an AR-15. Do you need one? I think a good analogy would be, do you need really expensive tennis shoes, sneakers, court shoes, whatever you want to call them, to play basketball really good? Brownells magazine coming in. No, you don't. We all know basketball players who are really good that don't have good shoes. However, if you are really good and you hook into a good pair of shoes, it might make you a little bit better. That's the way I look at non-suppressor muzzle devices. Like that. For instance, if you don't know how to shoot right now, your fundamentals suck, your trigger press sucks, the way you hold the gun sucks, you can't hit anything. Slapping this on the end of your gun is not going to help you. You need to square away your fundamentals first. And then, and only then, once you got that squared away, putting one of these on could help you. Could help you shoot faster, more on target, putting more rounds on target. There you go. That's how I look at it. And also, if we're talking about POU, this is really not a, a scientific review. <clears throat> it's not, nor is it gospel. It's pretty darn subjective, actually, from the Nut and Fancy project. I'm not going to shoot uh, you know, on a board and measure muzzle rise. I'm not going to do a bunch of night shooting, pumping a lot of ammo through the device just for that. These were tested incidentally with other tests, other guns. For instance, this is the fifth gun this has been on. That's why it's kind of banged up a little bit. And as we went along, we just kind of made a mental note of what it did well, what it didn't do so well. We'll talk about that. So not gospel, not scientific, and I think there's some good information out on the Griffin Armament stuff already.
There you go. Little POU. Box. That's all I'm saying, by the way. <laughs> the good news That's on the right. Griffin Armament, and there is lots of good news, is they have a wide variety of muzzle devices for you to choose from. You're looking at my favorite, and it is called the M4 SD2 Flash Comp. Here's one new in package. There you go. It's what I'm recommending to you to purchase. Totally worth the money. This is a combination muzzle brake, compensator, and flash hider. Maybe jumping back to POU just for a second, maybe you don't need all of those functions in your muzzle device. Again, we're talking non-suppressor muzzle devices. For instance, maybe you just want compensation, that is to eliminate muzzle rise. You're a three-gun competitor, a tactical carbine competitor. That's where I would go, actually. Do I really care about flash hiding then? No, not really. I want my device to be the best possible compensator that I can get. And that's where we will enter, I guess, a competitor to the Griffin Armament M4SD2 series, the Outstanding Battle Comp. And it is outstanding. I love Battle Comp. It's very effective for us. It's been proven on several rifles. But as we talk about value, you will see it falls woefully short of the Griffin Armament offering and in some other ways in some people's minds maybe durability but in most respects as a compensator pure compensator this is a standard of measure for me personally we did shoot the M4 SD2 comp and I will say it functioned just as good if not better than the battle comp there you go but I'm jumping ahead a little bit we're talking about the lineup there is a compensator it is 2.4 ounces it is a little bit heavier than the battle comp this is standard setting at just 1.8 ounces that is light. So the M4SD2 comp, a little bit heavier. This one again is a combination flash hider, compensator, muzzle brake. It weighs kind of a portly three ounces, but it is a multi-purpose device. So we gotta kind of give it that. And I think Griffin Armament really wants it durable. They make it out of 17-4 stainless steel and it's two times thicker in critical areas than the battle comp. So if you are a high volume user, that might be good weight for you. I am still very particular on what type of weight I hang on the end of my muzzle. I don't want to affect swing, pretty much. Get on target fast. And for you competitors, you want that too. Transitioning from target to target as fast as you can. And there are different philosophies about this, I understand. Some guys like more weight, some guys like less. But going down the Griffin Armament lineup, you have the M4 SD2 dedicated flash hider. There it is. And its job is not compensation, it's not muzzle braking, it's hiding the flash, dissipating it. Maybe that's the most important thing for you. I still love the YHM Phantom, and I think that offering would compete against the Phantom. It does not, however, have the scalloped edges that the Phantom does, and here's a 762 Phantom off of DPMS TAC-20. Here's another one on an AR-15. I've given this some airtime over the last five years scalloped ed edges, able to function as a non-lethal, perhaps lethal impact device. You won't get that, by the way, with the M4SD2 series. So factor that into your decision-making process. And then last in the lineup is M4SD2 dedicated muzzle brake. Do you need a muzzle brake for a 223? Uh, I personally do not. I actually will bias towards a compensation side of the formula. To me, that's the most important, to eliminate muzzle rise. Getting back to that basketball example, the good tennis shoes, I mean, in shooting, a good compensator will allow you to put more rounds on target very quickly. There you go. So those are your types. Oh, I did forget this one too. There is a 762 tactical compensator, and this is awesome. Highly recommended and much less expensive than the Battle Comp. The Battle Comp 762, I think, runs around 175 bucks. This is around 100, give or take. I could be off on those, but much less expensive. And it's exactly the same weight, 3.2 ounces for the Griffin, if my facts are straight. Still threaded by 5.8 by 24 thread per inch TPI. Highly recommended. Now I'll take us into, I guess, value, which we've kind of already started talking about. Do you want to go out and spend 175 bucks or more for your non-suppressor muzzle device? For instance, how much is that Knight's Armament Triple Tap? It's wire EDM cut. 
I can all st steal. Dude, very expensive. Uh, no, not for me. This will be around 100 bucks, probably a lot less, depending on where you go. That's why I'm giving it a tabletop review. It totally slams the battle comp for value, in my opinion. Battle comps are just uber expensive. They're excellent, but they're overpriced. And I hope Griffin Armament stays grounded as well. Because sometimes when a company gets big, they sell a lot of these things. And yes, we help here in the Night Fancy Project. They kind of lose their way and their pricing starts to elevate. And that sucks. So Griffin, don't do that. Keep them as affordable as possible. Value is excellent. So is a construction. We kind of talked about that already. They are extremely durable. Rated for full auto fire as well. And all of the M4 SD2 series are set up to interface with, I think, six different brands of suppressors. The A2 birdcage style of suppressor. So there you go. If that's what you have, that's what you're going to get. The M4 SD2 series will work. How about installation on this sucker? Well, I'm very impressed with the instructions that Griffin supplies. Check this out. They are detailed. They are easy to follow. And I give them a gold star. Great job. They provide with your M4SD2, whichever one you're going to choose, and this is a second generation, I think, and they may change it as years go by. They provide what's called a tabbed washer, and it's an over-insertion stop for your suppressor. Let me show you one right here. There we go. And they're also going to provide to you a peel washer. And here's one that is unheated. It comes in the package. Believe it or not, in this peel washer are 15 to 20 super slim washers. And the way you'll free them up is with a very high heat source, kind of like this. Let me light this sucker. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to do it right now. I did it with a sharp nose set of pliers. So you just heat that, that washer up, and out comes these things. Get a razor blade or some other knife or something and you just peel them apart and they're more cost effective and just as an effective attachment I should say spacing mechanism for your M4SD2 as opposed to a crush washer and Griffin will say they want you to use those because one it will make the gun more accurate so you will be able to index this with 22 to 32 foot pounds of force by the way I never do that I just crank them on until it feels about right I've never lost one so relax Maybe one day I'll start doing it. But I'm always taking them off and on, off and on. I've never lost one yet. But Griffin wants you to index it properly, and it will be absolutely concentric with a bore for maximum accuracy and, more importantly, no baffle strikes if you attach a suppressor to the M4SD2. And that's how you do it. You do it with a crush washer, you may not have that, that you know total alignment with a bore. So I recommend doing it. It's pretty easy to do though. You just clamp your barrel into a vise. I use Brownell's barrel clamps. I'll show you a picture here. Really crank down your barrel. Don't worry, you're not going to injure it in those aluminum clamps. And then you can provide the necessary torque. Put that sucker on. Easy to install. It'll take you a little bit to figure out how many of these shims, and that's basically what they are, that you'll put on. And you want to use as few as possible, they say. And that will take us to effectiveness. All this is fine and dandy, the value level, the construction, but if it's not effective, it ain't worth crap. For me, once again, these days, subject to change, I am biased towards more compensation off my muzzle device, non-suppressor variety, meaning I want to be able to rapid fire and stay on target. The M4 SD2 flash comp, and this is dura-coated by me, you knew that. I think that's Black Hawk Coyote Tan. I'm not positive though. But the compensation out of this sucker is amazing. Equal or better than Battle Comp 2.0. There you go. What's not to like? Flash hiding, excellent in our informal tests. Just superb. Better than the YHM Phantom, if memory Thank serves. You. There you go. Just excellent. Muzzle braking, that is reduction of, fire. I don't know, recoil. Yeah, I'll take it. I don't really have much to say on that because I don't notice it that much. And I go from so many guns in the Nut and Fancy Project. I'll go to a 308, you know, a 300 Winchester Mag bolt gun. Then I'll shoot AR-15 on the same outing. And so as a jack of all trades, I, I'm not really, I don't know, paying attention that much to recoil. Unless it's just horrendous. 
but I would say in all three functions, the M4ST2 flash comp is superb. And this is a very important consideration when we're talking about effectiveness. Concussion to people who are beside you, also excellent. And we've shot quite a few that aren't. A lot, actually. One of the worst was that proprietary Sabre Industries gill break that SPR had. It sucked. It was blowing guys' eardrums out. Same on some AK ones we've shot before. AK-74 series, they're extremely loud. This one, not so much. We didn't really notice uh, concussion. Also, very low debris kick up because the bottom is closed. Excellent job. Just superb. The only two things I can really level, criticism-wise, against, against this variation, this generation of M4 SD2 flash comp, is one, the weight. It is three ounces. That is kind of portly. But once again, it's multi-purpose. It's not just a comp. You can go to the comp version. It's 2.4 ounces. But this gives you FH capabilities. So we'll give you that. And plus, Griffin wants to make it very strong and durable for full, full auto fire. So weight is three ounces. I'd really like to see it be, I don't know, in future generations, two ounces for a flash comp. And then there's no scalloping on the front, if that's important to you for an impact device. Kind of like we showed you right here. That's it. Other than that, it is ideal. Outstanding non-suppressor, multi-purpose muzzle device. One of our favorites here, the Griffin Armament M4 SD2 series. Go to their website, pick your poison, and I'll tell you what, practice those fundamentals. Again, once you got that, you'll get better with this. Nothing fancy.